Ian from Lean Media here. Today I'm going to show you how to add a new Amazon FBA product listing for a product that you've created or a brand that you own. If this video helps, please take a moment to like it. Follow me. Let's get started. So I am an Amazon Seller Central. I'm in the invent inventory area. I have a new product that I'm ready to list. And actually, I want to show you a couple things first before we get into the listing process because it's important to prepare before you go down this road. Uh, you will need assets to upload to Amazon. So I have some metadata, bullet points, um, UPC code, a SKU, other, other information that I can use in the product listing. I've already prepared that. And actually, I use this in other places as well, including Shopify. Uh, the other thing you will really need are images. So I've prepared a lot of images for this particular listing. You can see one of them here. So this is a, a bundled product. This is what the packaging looks like. So this is the type of image that I'm going to upload to Amazon later on. I created this image using Canva. If you look in the uh, video notes for this particular video, I'll have some links there that you can follow. So anyways, we're ready to go. And let's get going from the inventory page in Amazon Seller Central. This is to create a new listing for an F Amazon FBA product. And this is for a brand that I operate. So I'm going to click on the button that says add a product. So you'll see this prompt, find your products in Amazon's catalog. So it's impossible that this product is in Amazon's catalog because I'm the brand owner. I'm the only person who sells it. There's a very limited supply of this product available. And uh, even though it does have a UPC or a, 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 what do you call it, a GTIN code that I can use, I'm not going to use a search field. I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. So what it's going to do is uh, try to categorize it. So select a product type. It's prompting me to actually select this particular category because this is the category that I use quite often. Uh, for my category, it's actually a very limited category and Amazon doesn't quite know where to uh, file it half the time. There's no dedicated uh, taxonomy for this product type. So I usually just go with what they, with, with what they uh, prompt here. If you, were start, if you were adding a new Amazon FBA product listing for a product that is categorized very clearly, like let's say it's some sort of automotive part, you could just either follow this tree or you could search for it and then Amazon would hopefully pre uh, present the proper category for it. So I don't need to do that. I'm just going to click select and it brings me to the generate listing content page. Uh, one thing that they offer right now is this kind of AI generated listing uh, and it's prompting me to try it right now. I actually don't trust Amazon's AI to do this right. I am I think that I'm a better uh, marketing person. I have better marketing copy than some uh, algorithm at Amazon can generate. So I'm gonna skip this. And then for the item name, I already have that on my list, on my, uh, my metadata list. It's actually pretty long, so I think Amazon may prompt me to shorten it, but let's see what they say. Item name, okay. Brand name, all right, so this is important. Oh, uh, first of all, variations. This product does not have variations, so I'm just gonna, sele I'm gonna select a no. It's actually selected by default. So the brand name, this is important. Uh, if it's a generic product, that is, there is no brand or it's no official brand in the Amazon brand registry, you would check off this. This product does not have a brand name. In my case, there is a brand. This is the brand for my for my product line. This is a registered brand in the Amazon brand registry. I have the trademarks for it. Uh, this is this is very established on Amazon. So I just selected that. If if it was if I was a new Amazon FBA seller, I might uh, type it in if it's already Amazon brand registered. If it's not Amazon brand registered, then you'd have to go through the process of registering the brand, and that might involve other steps, including trademarking the brand, which is beyond the scope of this particular video. So I'm selecting the existing brand and the external product ID. I do have an external product ID. That is a UPC code or a GTIN 12 code. I'm just going to copy and paste that right from my metadata. And by the way, I'm just using a text file for my metadata. A lot of people, they'll have a spreadsheet or maybe they'll have uh, you know, the GS1 website open so they can copy and paste this data in. So it's prompting me to select what type of external product ID it is. And in this case, it is, I'm just going to select the UPC number. Okay, and then go next. Okay, a product description. So there are a couple issues here with this particular product. The pr original product description that I created is actually quite long. And the reason is because it's a bundle of different products. So I'm going to use just a short version of that. And uh, let's see here. I'm just going to copy it over from my metadata page. 
And one thing I want to make clear with using a description, a long time ago, like maybe 10 or 15 years ago on Amazon, the description was super important. And Amazon, I think they hadn't yet realized that images are actually the most important part of your product listing. Amazon has since learned that listings are the most important thing. So don't spend too much time on your listing. Certainly, it should contain the basic facts of a particular product. But, you know, don't don't try to be like, a, you know, this an award winning marketing copy or anything like that, because honestly, it's not the most important part of your Amazon product listing, your Amazon FBA product listing. It really is the images. And we'll get to that in a minute. And so bullet point, I do have some bullet points ready. So I'm going to add the first one. And, the, and go through, I'm going to add all of my bullet points, which I've already prepared. Amazon may give me a hard time about the, um, actually, hold on here. What the heck is this thing? Get rid of that. Amazon may give me a hard time about having the emojis there. So we'll see what they say. Also, the, the large, large uh, type text. But usually what I do, I'll just try it out. If Amazon has an issue with that, they'll give me an error message and I can, I can uh, deal with that later on. Now it also may only let, let me do five, but I have a six bullet. I'm going to try to sneak it in here. Okay. All right. So here's the images part. Um, actually, let's take a look at the product images style guideline. It's way too long. All right, but this is the important stuff. We prefer images larger than 1,000 pixels on each side to allow for zoom, which has been shown to enhance sales. Okay, Th this actually makes great sense. And what you should have in the images that you've created is make sure that they're big enough, make sure that they look good if they're going to be zoomed up. Actually, I think 1,000 pixels is too small. For many of my images, such as this one right here, the, um, the, it's actually 2,500 pixels on each side. So it's, it's a lot bigger than that. But what that does is it lets people zoom in. So people may want to see what the uh, sticker looks like, and that's fine. So uh, let's get rid of that. There's some other requirements here, and you should, you should check out and see what they are. So um, is it, I don't think it's going to let, or you can, you can drag or drop them. So let's see if we can do that. And here is my get rid of this okay so basically I'm gonna be dragging or dropping from my file Explorer and let's see here the first one is the most important one is this is this one right here I'm just gonna drag that over this is 1500 pixels on the side that looks pretty good that actually shows all the items together and then I have this one. This is the one that I just sh showed you that I made from Canva. Just drag that over. And then I have a whole bunch of other items as well. And so I'm going to use this image. And this is basically all of the all of the different components of this particular bundle. This one, and then this one. So you can see they're giving me space for eight images or nine, uh, nine images. So I'm going to use eight of them. And actually, this one I can see it's a little small, um, but I think it's going to be okay because the elements within the image actually look pretty big. All right, so I've added the images in the bullet points, and I think I can submit this. Let's see what happens. Okay, there are 25 items that require your attention. Click OK button to find the first item and make sure you check each tab. So Amazon is going to have me make some changes. All right, so here, here's where we get into the uh, product details tab. So I've already, product identity, that's the brand. I already, I already identified that. Description, that's this paragraph of text and these bullet points and these images. And now it wants me to go through the product details. So I have to really wade through all of these details. And they're doing things like orientation, 
um, you know, the color family, whether it's framed or not. So I would check off no for that. Um, item edge longer length. And, you know, this gets into issues where this particular product actually has different different sized uh, pieces inside. So I'm going to have to figure out exactly how that how that uh, goes in there. But once I'm done of the product details, then I would go to the uh, to the offer. So this is where I would enter the price. I'd also put in my SKU and that that particular piece of information again is on my metadata file. So here's the SKU, the price, uh, condition type. So this would be new. And then down here, it says fulfillment channel. I will ship this item myself. So this is Amazon FBM and Amazon will ship and provide customer service fulfilled by Amazon. This is Amazon FBA. So I'm going to select that one. And then later on, once I submit this particular listing, I can go to the normal process for sending an inventory for an Amazon FBA item. Uh, basically, you know, I would go to the manage inventory page or maybe the restock inventory page and select the number of select the item and then select the number of units I want to send in. So there's quite a few things that I have to fill in here. And actually, I don't think I'm going to go through the every single one of them. Uh, one last mention, though, um, you, country and region of Warren. So we do all of our manufacturing in the United States. Surprise, surprise. Bat our batteries required. This is important. There's no batteries required for this, but if you had some sort of electronic gizmo that required batteries, you needed you need to say yes. And then dangerous good regulations. And um, for in my case, it's not applicable. But for other things, for instance, if you're selling some sort of uh, I don't know, it's a chemical or something like that, you may need to use one of these uh, uh, citations. You may also need to upload certifications for certain types of products on Amazon. But anyways, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the product details, fill out the required items. So the number of items, for instance, uh, the offer, that's the price, and the uh, package length. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to click Submit. And hopefully, Amazon will accept the listing, and then I can proceed with actually sending in items to Amazon FBA. And I have other videos that show how to do that, and I'll include some links in the notes. But that's the way to basically create a new listing for Amazon FBA for a brand that you operate or an item that you manufacture if it's generic. And that's how you do it. If this video helped, please take a moment to like it and follow me. If you go to leanmedia.org, that's my official website. Click on blog or video. I have lots more free information about uh, working with Amazon and other platforms. This is Ian Lamont signing off. Thank you so much for watching.